from the creators who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Wow Report. Uh, I'm Fenton Bailey, co-founder of World of Wonder, joined by our chief creative officer, Tom Campbell. Hello, hello, and, hello. Hello. And of course, James St. James, editor of the Wow Report. We're counting down the top 10 things of the week that made us go, wow. wow. And as usual, we start at number 10. Number 10. Well, believe it or not, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about TikTok. What? Specifically, the Used to Be Young TikTok series by Miley Cyrus, which is being uh, dropped one mini episode a day. It's like a micro dosing of Miley, if you will. Have you watched any of them? I am fascinated. Please explain and, and break it down for me. Maybe, maybe. On? What is TikTok? No, I'm <laughs> Well, as we know, Theron, who works here, who we love and work with, he's gone to the TikTok side. This is like about a year and a half, two years now, yeah. where his whole worldview comes from TikTok, which is kind of useful for uh, the rest of us because I don't have to watch it, but I'm like, you know, what do the kids think about this? What's going on? Anyway, but there's been a lot of things in your feed, I'm sure, about Miley, who, by the way, has not performed live or on television uh, this whole year, and yet Flowers is the number one song of the summer. So she's like kicking ass. And I have such respect for Miley going into this series, but what it is is they just sat down with her, the, the kids at, at TikTok, they put her in a, uh, against a wall. She has each question, there's a little piece of video or something visual to remind her. And th she's 30 years old and they're doing 30 years of memories with her. And so each one lasts, 45 seconds, two minutes, 30. And she handles it so well. And you get the sense that outside of the couch off camera, it's like her mom and some friends. So it's this really easy vibe. But she has, in little drips and drabs, been very forthright and dropped stuff like this. She said that the bangers tour, she goes, that's what people really don't understand about touring. The show's only 90 minutes, but that's your life. And if you're performing at a certain level of intensity and excellence, there should be an equal amount of recovery and rest. There's a level of ego that has to play a part that I feel gets overused when I'm on tour. And once that switch is on, it's hard to turn it off. Hmm. I think that when you're training your ego every single night to be active, that's the hardest switch for me to turn off. It's really kind of profound and it insightful. Profound. So the sort of the insatiable thing of being a star and the need for attention yes. and feeding that beast. You're saying get gets becomes its own sort of demon, right? Yes, and that not, and, and it's only ninety minutes. The thing is ninety minutes. That's just like you know longer than than it takes for us to go from getting here to going on to lunch. But it's everything, and you feed your soul, and then you're just crave for it. She also said she did not make a red dime on the bangers tour that she spent so much money on. And I went to the Banger store and I loved it. And they showed clips of her coming. You know, she came out of her own mouth. Remember she had that slide and she came out of it and she had the little people. It was just fantastic. And she just said, I don't regret not making any money on it. It was investment in me. It was invested in me as an artist. Well, well, from what I understand was that nobody, she had all these fantastic ideas and these outrageous ideas and nobody would, would fund it. And so she said, I'll do it myself. Subsequently, she ended up making absolutely yeah. nothing off of it. But artistically, it was a great triumph yes. for her. And she's and she's so not bitter about it. Again, she's in her own words, it's very spontaneous. So you just feel like you're really getting like you're you're you got sat next to Miley at a dinner party and she's telling you everything the way it should be. Here's another little tidbit. I'm sorry, I'm gonna read, but she goes, and she's given um a piece of paper that shows her schedule one day when she was like 12 or 13, right? Wake up at 5 30 a.m. to get into hair and makeup done at 7 a.m. Get picked up to go to the interview at 7.15 p.m. More interviews at 7.45, 8.15, 8.45. Then a two-hour break to meet with the editors. Later in the day, another interview at an unspecific, unspecified time uh, before 1 p.m. At the time, the reporters are fifth grade students. This time, the reporters are fifth grade students. And then interviews for the rest of the day until 6.15. She goes, and I'm a lot of things, but I ain't lazy. And then she would um, you know, have another day like that and then fly on Sunday and be back in the set of Hannah Montana on Monday. I, I don't know if it's just my algorithm, but I saw all these stories. Did you guys not see the story about how she said that when she was photographed with Demi Lovato and Taylor Swift and Emily Osment wearing sweatpants after the VMAs or something that we should have known she was bisexual? And then she had talked about the Annie Leibovitz photo that she took when she was 15 and said that 
Noah, her little sister, was actually sitting in the. Yes, yeah, so you know that shame. picture that she was slut shamed for. She was. It was over the shoulder. You see it and you remember it. But she, it was. It was Miley when she was still handed. She had red lipstick on. They they decided to put her in red lipstick. It was. In other words, she explained the behind the scenes and how very purposeful it was. And literally, her little baby sister was sitting in Annie Leibovitz's lap, pushing the button. So it couldn't have been a more, you know, familial, open, friendly environment. And yet. Everyone, de you know, no one's been demonized like Miley Cyrus. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. And that, that she can back out of it with so much grace. The last thing she talked about, she talks about her house burning down, all kinds of stuff. But she talks about um, how Sinead O'Connor, when she did the Wrecking Ball, I remember she had the close up for the long time in Wrecking Ball before she came on a Wrecking Ball. And she goes, she was attacked by Sinead O'Connor. And she said so brilliantly, I'm not going to repeat it right. She said, listen, I was 20 years old and I didn't realize Sinead's mental health. She was, I, don't, I think at 20, I don't even know if I knew what that meant, the full breadth of that. She said, and she didn't say anything bad about Sinead. She goes, I love her. I truly do. But she goes, she was saying that you stole that from me, that that was my idea. And if you think that, if you think you came up with that idea, it's the patriarchy assuaging you and mollifying you by saying you did. And, and she's like, I'm sorry, but it was my idea. <laughs> and she goes, and I love you know, but just even women attacking women, like, you know, or just this, this everyone's opinion, make, feeling free that you can just drop a bomb on Miley all these years. And she's 30 years old. She was with Liam, by the way, for 10 years. And I'm the kind of person, if you're in a relationship for 10 years, my hat is off to you. I think you should get like a gold medal and a big prize because 10 years of anything. So anyway, it, it's it's an easy, breezy go through. Uh, one just got dropped today. Uh, and there, I don't know how many there are, but she's going to go up till she's 30. She's, she's getting close. So so that's Miley's used to be young TikTok series. And we'll put links, of course, on the wow report at worldofwonder.net slash Radio Andy. Number nine, James. Number nine. Talk about things you need to stop now and drop everything and go watch. This is it's bottoms the new uh it's a teenage lesbian fight club rom-com that you didn't know you needed as badly as you did this has fantastic word of mouth fantastic critic rating the audiences are going bananas i saw it in the theater i usually go to the 10 30 11 a.m show so nobody's there it was mobbed everybody was laughing so hard you missed the next jokes people were standing and cheering and i mean it was just it was like an audience like i haven't participated in in forever it's written produced and starring rachel senate it also stars Iayo Adele Edelbree Beery. I can't remember pronounce her name. Ruby Cruz, Havana Rose, um, Lou, Kaya Gerber, who is so good, surprisingly fabulous, and Nicholas Gallatin from Red, White, and Royal Blue. Um, and it's two unpopular queer girls in high school decide to start a fight club so that they can roll around with the cheerleaders mm -hmm. and they hopefully can get some from the fight club. And it is so like off the wall, crazy. The rhythm to it is unlike it's maybe it's lesbian humor that I'm not used to because it's very dry and snappy and funny, but it's not like gay in your face. I, how do you describe you know, it? I, thought, I just I would describe it as kind of broad city meets book smart but gay uh, there you go that's exactly it i i can definitely see that to me it feels like that once in a generation heathers clueless mean girls we're 20 years from now we're still going to be quoting it we're still going to be influenced by it everything about this feels so 2023 There's and rachel senate is a star she's going to be oh. a big star she was in that bodies 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 that i yes, saw she and was. she was the best part she was, but also the um Io Edelbiri, um the 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 black. She's girl in is, the bear. Oh, she she is in the bear. She yes, she's so fantastic in that. There's just these quotes that like I've just been. Yeah, yes, let's do ha terrorism, Hannah. Uh, oh, but, I loved I love when it's like grow up. We want to stick our fingers in each other or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then there um when Kaya Gerber says I'm not gay, I just like gay porn. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, it's just everything about this. It is literally every beat is funnier than the last. And like I said, people are laughing so much that you're missing the next jokes. Did you see it with the crowded theater, Blake? 
I did. And every it was super crowded. And it was last night, a, a Thursday night, at, you know, not a, an important night, but it was it was packed. Yeah. Yeah. The, the word of mouth on this is just it's it's absolutely fantastic. I haven't seen a, a movie reviewed like this in a long time. It's and my girl, Charlie X. Charlie XCX does the music too. Yeah, it's Charlie, and the music, the soundtrack is absolutely spectacular. Earlier in the summer, I think it played at Outfest. That, would that make makes sense. sense. And of course, yeah. I was like, Outfest, it's called Bottoms. It's got to be a, a male well, gay movie. And but it I, isn't because right. they're at the bottom of they're at the bottom of the social pile. Is is what right. it is. But um, Nicholas Gallatin is a, a straight football player, but he's the gayest character I have I ever I kept waiting seen. for him to come out, yeah. No, but he does it because his name's Jeff. Oh. And he like, and then Whenever the they blow up the car and he's like singing to his disc men to turn around. <laughs> he's singing Bonnie Tyler. <laughs> I've never seen you two happier. It is, no, right. I mean, it is such a fun, fun movie. I went into it with zero expectations, and I have been just laughing about it nonstop since I saw it over the weekend. It sounds like the event worth getting COVID for. I'm heading to the theater. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, COVID is definitely back. So the theater's the place True. to go. Or the office. <laughs> like we're all in the office today. And it was like well, I haven't you know, seen more people in the week. office in years. Today. This week, the, the new the new COVID vaccine rolls out, and I hope we all get it because I, I'm definitely getting it next week. That's a good idea. That's very good. All right, bottoms. That's number nine. Number eight. Number eight. I saw a documentary last week that rocked my world, and it came out earlier in the year. It's called Hypnosis. Squaring the circle, which I you know, I squaring the circle. It's like doesn't give you a lot away, but I knew what hypnosis was because when I was a teen back in the seventies, uh, they were the go-to designers of album covers. Yes, I knew their work, but I had no idea the almost complete extent of almost every album that came out during that period they designed the cover. Most notably, I guess, most, it's hard, it's a toss up really, but well, Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd, really put them on the map. That prism with the light refracted through it. Um, I guess it helped that it sold 65 million albums and that really made them a household name. But, you know, all of the um, the Pink Floyd album covers, the yes. one with the man on fire and everything yes. like that. Oh they're my all gosh. Wish yeah. you were here. Yes. yes. Hypnosis. I mean, they really ran with cover art in a decade when there was vinyl and cover art was a thing. You would buy the album. I mean, this makes no sense to anyone today. But back in the day, you would get your pocket money. You would save up for weeks. You would go buy the album. Then you'd take it home and you'd put the record on. And I'm not saying anything that anyone else hasn't said a million times before, but it is so true. You'd put the record on and study that cover, every letter, every yes. everything. And but you know the thing is because it, it's so many of the pictures were so high concept and yet yes. so low concept. It's like the one with yes. the cow. Like they just go and take a picture of a cow, and it becomes one of the most iconic album covers of all time. And the story of that was they wanted to create the most meaningless cover ever. I mean, it's so postmodern. It's so meta. It's like <laughs> we're going to make a cover that means nothing. And of course, but in, at the same time, nothing, it ends up meaning everything. Meaning everything. And uh, for that moment, cows were just this sort of in pop icon thing you know and um and, and of course you know, and then so but but the the artistry is there for everything they do when i think of like that band on the run uh that with yes. the, with the black and white all the, the wings and the, yes. the sir yes. i mean so much of it is just it is it could hang in museums and it, and it rightfully should well of course liam gallagher i think it's liam gallagher the one from oasis says he's in the, he's in the film and he says very wisely, Noel Gallagher, I'm so sorry, I got my Gallagher brothers muddled up. Um, he said that, you know, in those days, the album collection was the affordable art collection of the oh, working yes, class. Please. And and um, he also tries to explain to his daughter that he was late coming home one day and he, he was trying to, he was in a meeting about the cover for his next album. And she was like, well, what are you talking about? And 
he was trying to explain it. And he ended up saying, you know, those tiny little pictures on your iTunes. He said, that's the cover. And she's like, you had a meeting of that? About that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so he's very shrewd and very on it. And of course, hypnosis were um, at, at, at the perfect time because they kind of really maximized the gatefold, you know, the fold out sleeves. And the work was so expensive and elaborate. I mean, to me, the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate record cover of all time, and I couldn't even tell you what the record is on Led Zeppelin's presence, but that cover, it's all these pictures from sort of stock photos from the 50s and 60s, very sort of cheesy domestic pictures of families in restaurants or a doctor trending a job around this black object, this sort of inspired by the obelisk in 2001, but given a twist and it's this objet and everybody's sort of gathered around it. I mean, you know, what is an iPhone today in our lives, but, but that thing. And there's something so magical about that cover. I don't know to this day. It, 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 Wait, what's it called? Good. Prognosis? It's um, the, no, the name of the company who did the work no, is no, 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 the, the, name of the, al the album cover. I'm trying to look at this. Presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E. Oh, James, it's fantastic. Well, I also yeah, want to point out that hypnosis is spelled with a G. It is violent. indeed. Hip for cool and gnosis for knowledge. The Greek word of knowledge. I've never right? seen this image before in my life. James, that's not... Oh, my gosh. It's just iconic. Anyway... <laughs> the other thing about this story and this film, directed by Anton Corbin, who directed Closer, the Joy Division uh, film. There you go. Yes, thank you, Tom. We'll post pictures of these covers on the WOW Report. Um, the, the, the other thing about this film is that it kind of charts the rise and ultimate demise of progressive rock, prog rock. Um, and, you know, when punk came along in, in the, in the mid-70s, there was this sort of backlash against these sort of overblown, pompous, self-inflated... Corporate rock. Corporate rock, uh, foreigner, Boston. Just sort of overblown and sort of... And, and the epitome of that was uh, uh, the Wings' Greatest Hits album where Paul McCartney had bought some statue at Sotheby's and he wanted hypnosis to take it to the top of a mountain in the Alps and photograph it. And that became the cover of the Wings' Greatest Hits album. He bought this ridiculous Art Deco statue. and Because in those days, there was no Photoshop. You know, everything had to be done for real. So the man on fire in Wish You Were Here, really that am, man huh? was on fire. And it's one of the most dangerous stunts because normally when you set someone on fire, they're moving, they're running, they're falling. But in these pictures, had to stand absolutely still as they were engulfed by flames. So and there's some the video to warn people about <laughs> the dangers of setting someone on fire. It, I, it I would be a TikTok that. challenge, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> there was some um, there was some video from the '90s that paid homage to that, and it's a man running through the streets on fire. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I do, but I can't remember who. I can't remember who it is either. Anyway, sounds very La Chapellean. Um, the marvelous thing about hypnosis is it was two guys who kind of met. They were they were in Cambridge in the sixties. The police raided the party house. Everyone fled except these two people who were left in a room talking to each other. And out of that came this incredible studio, this incredible work. I mean, it just it's a really great film. It's on. I think it's on uh, Amazon, you know, Apple Plus, um, really beautifully done. And it's a sad story, too, what happened to them in the end. Which I'm not going to tell you, because then you won't go and see it. Spoiler alert. So um, let's take a break. Let's. I've got a question. And it's about bottoms, so maybe only James will know the answer, but sorry. Thank you. So what queer movie... Does Bottoms pay homage to during the diner scene? All right, we'll have the answer right after the break here on The Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to The Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with Tom and James and Blake. And, and just before we get the answer to the teasing question, Two new shows for your viewing pleasure. That's Inside the Producer's Studio with Candy Muse 
and Jimbo Presents. It's my special show. Both have new episodes every Monday on WOW Presents Plus. Oh, and as of next week, Janice mm-hmm. Madison ate that. She did ate that. She ate that, yeah. Sign up now at wowpresentsplus.com. We talked about the movie Bottoms, which is hilarious. You have to go see it. What queer movie does Bottoms pay homage to during the diner scene? James? No, I don't even remember the diner scene. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. It's, it's a queer movie, right? Mm-hmm, it's a queer movie. I'm going to guess uh, Call Me By Your Name. Mm-hmm. Good guess. C- Serial Mom. Mm-hmm. Good guess. James, have a guess. Uh, I have no I have no idea what anyone's what talking about. I'm completely having an aneurysm. Well, <laughs> it, the camera pans out, or it starts from out, and the name of the diner is But I'm a Diner. Right, right. I remember that, yeah. But I'm and a cheerleader. Then, but I'm a cheerleader. And then the waitress's name tag says Natasha, right, when they walk oh, in. Okay, okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. We're counting down the top 10 things that made us go wow this past week. We've reached number seven. Tom. Number seven. Whoa. So (laughs) I'm sitting in bed on our day off on Monday, Labor Day, and I'm flipping through Facebook because I'm that hip. I, I got a Facebook account, people. And I see a clip of a new clip of Cher, beautifully lit from her home in Malibu. And it's a clip from that morning's Good Morning Britain, where she's making an appearance. I don't know why the people interviewing her made so many mistakes, but she was there to first talk about, kind of plug her new Christmas album, which is coming this this fall, which is supposed to be spectacular. Someone we know who's a songwriter, who don't say the name, if you know, has, I think, two tracks on the album. So when when we get closer to it all being official, We'll have to have that person. Might be a man. Might be we will. But we'll they're going to get too it. big for us. They're not going to like. They're not going to have time for us anymore. I know, but that's pretty incredibly exciting. Mm. And then, so then she plugged, which I already knew about and I've heard about, and I've actually seen about town, but I never went. But it's Labor Day. I'm lying in bed. I've got nothing to do. And she talked. <laughs> they talk about Sherlato, her gelato truck. You know about this, right? No. <laughs> Oh my God, Cher came, she loves ice cream. She's eaten it all over the world. But when she had this gelato in New Zealand, sent to maybe we had, so we didn't know it. Um, she had to have it with so the chef, whose name I don't care because Cher is involved. He and Cher went to this, into this business and there is the Cher Lotto van, which if you go to sharelotto.com, you can find out where it's coming next. Um, and it happened to be at the Santa Monica Pier on Labor Day Monday. So I called my friend Greg and I realized this is why he's my friend for like 20 something years. Cause I can call him up and goes, do you want to go get a, a share lotto? And he's like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. So we got in the car, we drove it, you know, Oh, it, it's always in busy, fun places. There wasn't a huge long line. It was popular, but it was, it was, it was, and also I have to say Santa Monica on Labor Day Monday was not crowded. It was not crazy crowded. The weather was a little Wait, funky. But, but hold on. Let me, let me just clar- clarify something. Oh. Cher is not serving the Cher Lotto. She's not. No, the they same. always make you believe that she might be. Well, she was in Britain. Produced, oh, no, right, right. Not. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. But I get there and there's this, 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 I presume gay guy who ends up when I talk to him and he's like, hello. And he's doing all the spiel. It's so fantastic. And he ends up being a guy who's done audience for RuPaul's Drag Race. He's like, you know, booked audience for RuPaul's Drag Race. So it's a small gay world. And um, the flavors are chocolate XO share, uh, 72% onyx dark chocolate topped with cocoa nibs and freeze dyed raspberries. Now, I'm sorry, on the way there, we were already full of puns. Like, shouldn't it be a chasberry flavor? I'm sorry, an Elijah blueberry muffin cone or something? I had what Cher said was her favorite uh, on the television show, which is the SoCal's coldest avocado on toast. So it's avocado flavored ice cream in a cone. Ooh. It's very creamy. It's a little bit savory. And they put nibs and things on tops. And they don't force you to have the nibs. They say, it's the way Cher likes it. You're like, I'm in. What is a nib? Little little crunchy. Little cocoa nibby, like a little crunchy thing. They make chocolate out of, I think. If you look at your, um, if you have your phone with you, James and and Fenton, I did send you about an hour ago, I sent you my pictures. Which are quite I think lovely. If I Google nibs, it's going to come up with something X-rated. I'm not. Well, go on. Maybe it's it. the sequel to Bottoms. 
<laughs> this isn't fun for radio. But you know, this is a big truck, and they take your picture. Maybe yeah. and that's oh, one of the picture. logos on the thing. And share lotto this way, and there's the big truck, and then there's picture of share that gets cut off when they do it, and there are the flavors. So, and then there's this the cute the cute guy who uh who who I just wanted to who took my order, and they're really like it doesn't seem to be profit oriented right now and they literally will let you taste every flavor i didn't because i felt guilty but like and and i i actually pulled up and i think i've lost it now but it's it's going to be friday today it is going to be uh, on montana avenue um but you can go to sharelotto.com and find out for yourself so it's there's so, one truck one truck one truck right now okay. but I, I think it's just like a, they're, they're just sampling and getting it feels exciting. so exciting. It feels like the launch of a massive brand. And and I was just gonna say this is like this is like with with it's such an amazing time right now, which sounds such a fuddy duddy thing to say, but you know, with Barbie Heimer and with the Miley Cyrus show, it's like in this sort of late age of capitalism, it's so amazing how like micro brands can suddenly like pop up and explode. It's sort of weird and unpredictable and exciting, right? Yes, and I and uh, and because Cher is loved like no other, there's something totally satisfying about making half a day about going. It, it, <laughs> it, we parked far away. We walked along the the cliffs of Santa Monica. I thought I saw Olivia John go by in roller skates as a sister muse, and uh, you know, and then had the thing, and we ate, and we talked to people. It's 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 a, it's it's a talking point, and people are waiting in line or having fun. So it's so an it Instagram was, opportunity. Is there mar merch as well? There is merch. We saw the sign for merch. We didn't see merch, and we were we, we have to go back. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, on uh, the September eighth, it's at one four six two Montana Avenue, number one, Santa Monica. Then it's Saturday. It's at the Santa Monica Pier, two to nine uh, p.m. Santa Monica Pier again on Sunday, twelve to seven. <laughs> so, so it's it's worth going to. It's worth going to. You're uh, turning me on to all these things to do in LA, like Mr. Brainwash's museum, the Funko yes. store in Hollywood. Uh, 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 don't forget Dobrik's Pizza. You still have to go to Dobrik's Pizza on Sunset. Or Gladstones before it closes. I, I when I went to Gladstones on on Friday, but I'll tell you about that uh, later. All right. Okay. James, number six. Number six. Well, I too was just lying in bed on Monday with nothing much to do. And I finally took a deep dive into Heartstopper on Netflix, which is a, a gay coming of age British rom com. Um, it uh, totally adorable. Um, Joe Locke and Kit Connor are the stars. Um, uh, I, I hope they go on to do other things. It's two British teens. One is like this goofy, adorable uh, overthinker. And then the other is this cheerful, uncomplicated, popular ginger uh, rugby player. And the teacher sits them next together to each other. And the, uh, the goofy boy automatically falls in love with the ginger rugby player and thinks he doesn't have a chance in hell. But of course, they end up becoming very good friends and then eventually more than friends and it's first love. And they have to navigate coming out to the rugby team and this and that. And it's all the, the, the tropes that we are used to in, in this type of thing. But um, it was slightly triggering for me because... I was a cheerful, uncomplicated ginger boy who my first love was a goofy little Persian boy who was an overthinker. And to me, it was the young James St. James story. And I felt like they had they took every, pages out of my diary and 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 stole them and put them on the on the small screen. Um uh, but didn't you it, think that when you first saw Citizen Kane that it was the young James St. James? Story I, I as think well? everyone is always stealing my life. It's just, it's just, I had such, I've had such a, a crazy mixed up life that everything is applicable to me. But um, it's three seasons. I highly recommend it. Like I said, the kids are, you want them to go on to do more and more things, you want them to be big, huge stars. Um, uh, is there seems to be this sort of plethora of of gay content on Netflix and uh, and and Hulu and everything, and it seems like we're sort of in a golden age of gay youth stories, which are not the typical bullying, beat up, you know, sad, 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 you know, 
tragic, tragic, tragic. It's more happy love stories and things like that. And I'm all for it. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You could pair that with Young Royals, I think, right? Or Red, White, and yeah, Red, White, and Royal Blue. Or um, mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, there's a whole bunch of everywhere. There. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's on Netflix, Perfect. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Number five. Number five. I, know, I don't normally do the sort of the people who've passed on thing. And I was going to say rest in perfection. I'm not sure we can really say that about this man. Um, I'm talking about Mohammed Al-Fayed, who died this week, aged 94. Um, there's a fantastic scene about him in Netflix's The Crown, where, um, but, but, but they don't really pursue the story. Oh, who is Mohammed? Who was he? Of course. He was the father of Dodi Al-Fayed, who was Princess Diana's last boyfriend, who was with Diana in the car that crashed in the tunnel in Paris after leaving the Ritz Hotel, which, of course, Mohammed Al-Fayed owned. Mohammed owned the Ritz. He owned Harrods of, of London, a world-famous department store. He also owned and restored the... Um, Oh, what was it called? The 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 place where uh, Edward the Seventh and Mrs. Simpson lived in um, the Villa Windsor uh, on the outskirts of Paris. Um, and it seems he was a very complicated man, and he had a very adversarial relationship with the British establishment. It seemed as if the British establishment didn't like him, didn't welcome him in. In fact, he never got British citizenship. Um, and it seems if there was a sort of, you know, it seems if a lot of the dislike was racially based um, at the same time. I, there's you know, also something to say about the outsider who comes in and is going yes. to restore their precious, you know, writs and their Herods. And the mm -hmm. I, it, that does seem very racially motivated, but it's also sort of a xenophobic, uh, you know, like we fear of the outsider. But of course, you know, in the mid 80s. He was the guy who had half a million, half a billion pounds to buy Harrods. You know, no yeah. one else was going to do it. And Harrods was like on the skids. It wasn't doing particularly well. And I know it's a jewel of the establishment and, and what have you, but he really wanted in, I guess. And maybe it was also the perhaps of desperation that put people off or made him such a a loathed and despised well, anytime figure. there's somebody who's a, perceived as a social climber people are going that to have new jerk so. reactions but there is that great scene in the crown where um is it princess margaret ha go has to go talk to him at the races and she's like cringing and then diana swoops in and yeah. sits down and she's like oh fit thine now i don't have to say anything but it, diana was the one who sort of embraced him in a way that diana was very open to people they did really become friends and yeah. um it's he actually, I didn't know this. I mean, he had quite a complicated relationship with his son, Dodi. Um, said that when it came to work, Dodi was a waste of space. Um, this is a, a, according to Andrew Neal, who edited the London Sunday Times and who worked for Muhammad, sort of trying to advise him as a, a, in a media capacity later in his life. Um, and uh, he, bl he blamed himself for Dodi and Diana's death because they wanted to leave the Ritz that night and they wanted to go out the back door. And the security people said, absolutely, you cannot. And Dodie said, absolutely, I will and I can. And they were like, no, you cannot. If you want to leave, you've got to call your father. And the security people called Mohammed and he gave permission for Dodie to leave the Ritz via this unauthorized, unapproved route to go out the back door. So he has always blamed himself for, for the death of his That's son. That's sad. It is, it is. So uh, that's R.I.P. Mohammed Al-Fayed. Um, let's take a break. Drag Race Germany with Barbie Breakout and, of course, the marvellous Diane Brill is uh, airing now on Why It Was Ends Plus on new episodes on Mondays. We should probably get Diane to come on the show. She would love to. One. Let's do that. That's a yes. good idea. Uh, you can watch... Drag Race Germany, along with Drag Race Down Under, Drag Race Philippines, Drag Race Brazil, Drag Race Mexico, the finale this week, available on Wild Presents Plus. Yep. And I have a question. What does the red light on the spire on top of the Capitol Records building down the street from us here spell out in Morse code? What? Yep. 
We will have the answer after the break here on The Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to The Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with Tom and James and Blake. That is a really weird, intriguing question. Weird, yes. Yeah. I asked... What does the red light on the spire on top of the Capitol Records building down the street from us here at WOW headquarters spell out in Morse code? Just to refresh people, the Capitol Records building is an iconic building built, I think, in the like 1960 or late 50s. And it's it's a round skyscraper. And it was set, it was said to, uh, I think, Nat King Cole, who was a recording artist at Capitol, said it looked like a stack of albums. Mm -hmm. And then it has a, a, a thing that points up. And they put a Christmas tree on that spire at christmas time it's still a beautiful building iconic breathtaking building well um, it has a red light at the top of the spire that blinks and it's actually morse code that spells out what what spells out probably help i'm being held captive in the basement of the capitol building i think it spells out hollywood i think it spells rock and roll it spells hollywood oh don't you know oh, that you always get it right. I because at one point I used when I, I used to get CDs because I worked at MTV and I got them for years and I get from Rhino and I got like a Capitol Records collection. I just and I learned listened to every song from like 1940 to 1960 and I probably read that along the way. Well, how does that help with your with the Morris Code? Because it must have been in, in the liner notes or something. It's just it's what I it's what interests me: pop culture, people, music, records. We're all pop culture whores here. Yes, That's we right. Are. And we're counting down the top 10 things of the week that made us go, wow, we've reached number four, Tom. Number four. I'm going to, um, with no respect to anyone I'm about to talk about, I'm going to talk about a few people. It is a rest in, uh, in perfection kind of thing. Mm -hmm. One is Gary Wright passed away at 80. Gary Wright had a huge, two huge songs, but the biggest one, Dreamweaver. Oh, Dreamweaver. Oh. I think we can make it through the night. Hard to explain to someone today how um, aurally, how how different that sound was, how space mm. age and and delightful. It's sort of a yacht rock song now, but it sort of had this incredible sound. Um, the other one that um, sent me um, to Gladstones this weekend was uh, Jimmy Buffett of Margaritaville fame, uh, passed away at 75, which seems young, just because I'm old. And Jimmy Buffett, had this, A, he was a Democrat to the end, which I love, and he embraced the island life, the feel good, all his music had such a, a philosophy to it. And, and he's one of the first artists I was aware of who went deep with the branding. I think there was Margaritaville bars, there was Margaritaville <laughs> drinks, you know, he really was a lifestyle, you know, and he never broke up like the Beatles. He was Jimmy Buffett the whole time. What was the Palm Springs Hotel that he took over and yeah. turned into Margaritaville? I can't remember what it was called, but it is Mar it's still called Margaritaville. Yeah, but the, the hotel before was so amazing. It was, and now I can't even remember what it was. I, also think he, there's a, I think there might even be like a retirement village in Florida that's Margaritaville. But there's there's a song, Vegas. Yeah, and there's a song of his called Come Monday, which is one of his first. It's Margaritaville, obviously. There's also a song called Cheeseburger in Paradise, which is why I went to Gladstone's and I ordered a cheeseburger. <laughs> and it's, it's got this great way. I like mine with lettuce and tomatoes, Heinz 57 and French fried <laughs> potatoes, big kosher pickle and a tall glass of beer. Because gosh almighty, which way do I steer to a cheeseburger in paradise? paradise. As I thought about talking about this, I knew I would just disgust James with my heteronormative taste. <laughs> But I can't well, help it. I my can't real dad, it. that that song holds a special place in my heart because my real dad used to sing it to my mom. Yes. <laughs> you know, we should do an uh, evergreen episode, songs about food. Oh, Done. God. Like but the last thing I say about him is on Come Monday, it's all you know, headed up to San Francisco for a Labor Day weekend show. I, got I, my I, I, I confess, on. I've never I understood the Jimmy Buffett appeal. I don't get it. You've turned me off. I don't care that he's dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe if I sang a few more bars, okay, I won't. But a cheeseburger there, there, in paradise, I like oh my mine. God. I no. And but you're from Florida. Incredibly. Rednecky about his music, but he wasn't a redneck. You know, he was something. He was 
like sleeve. Or like, and yet, but it doesn't matter if every single one of your fans is a Republican old. Well, weirdo. I'm trying to get some of the blue people onto the onto the train here. And there's just a line, and now James has ruined the mood. But there was a line where it's like, you know, um, uh, uh, California has worn me quite thin. Still, I can't wait to see you again. There's something about if people know the song when he gets California has worn me quite thin. It makes me cry every time I sing it, except for now because James has me worked up. So rest in paradise, I will say to uh, you know. in paradise. Yes. And James, you you were just talking before the broadcast. We've lost someone who who. Uh, oh, well, no, you know, uh, Steve Steve Harwell from Smash Mouth passed away this weekend as well. Is that the walking and, on the sun? Yeah. Hey, now you're an all star. Get the game on. Go play. Which I was saying to before and, and Blake was poo pooing it, but it really was ubiquitous for a number of years. It was every commercial, every TV show. Every time you turned on the radio, you could not escape it. And whether or not you liked the guy or or whatever you felt, it was sort of the soundtrack of our lives in the early 2000s. And so I went to the grocery store yesterday and it came on. And everybody was singing it in a way that was sort of suddenly like, everyone had a lighter. Someone, yeah, had a yeah. Lighter again. It was, but, um, but you, you, there are these songs that are just you know whether you like them or not, they they were everywhere. And I'm gonna end with a with a discussion, a qu quick beat about the living, and that is I have no FOMO about not seeing Beyonce. I really am glad people took pictures and I got to see them. But the only moment I, I had a little FOMO, and I'm so glad the video exists is when uh, on her 42nd birthday, Beyonce's 42, um, in the middle of the set, an empty stage, out comes Miss Diana Ross. And she kind of fills time and spins. And to see Diana projected as large as those projections are, and, and she kind of goes down and she's singing Love Hangover, which still sounds, a song from 1975, it still sounds like it could have been released yesterday. And the audience kind of jiving to it. And then, Sort of, she's kind of hanging there, and Beyonce starts to bolt, boom, 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 down this football field of a thing to find Diana Ross and to hug her. And Diana Ross is her happy birthday, and and Beyonce said to Diana, "Thank you so much. You are amazing. This is a legendary Diana Ross. Thank you so much for all your sacrifice and your beauty and your grace. Thank you for opening doors for me." So mm. she's very much alive, but. Being paid tribute to by when when lit when legends collide. There you go. Right. Oh my god. What's interesting because I had saw an old view from the like late nineties or early two thousands, which Diana was on, and they asked her who they who she thought would still be around in twenty years, and who she thought was you know were the new kids up and coming. Was it J Lo? Was it Britney? And she said, No, there's this girl Beyonce who I think has it all, and she's got so much talent in her little pinky, and I think she's the real. Deal. Deal. And so, twenty years later, to see that they that they still love and appreciate each other was, was mm. very sweet. A great moment for both of them. Is iconic. Yeah. All right, number three, number three, the scandal of the week. I don't know if you've been paying attention to it. Tucker Carlson had on his show this toothless old meth addict hobo looking freak show who said that in 1999 he sold cocaine to obama barack obama they smoked crack and they had totally gay butt sex together okay <gasps> now this guy has been around forever and ever and ever in 2008 he sold the story to the national Enquirer. it has been debunked a hundred thousand times he has been in jail himself. His name's Larry Seidler, no, Larry Sinclair. And he spent time in prison for forgery, for fraud, for larceny, just a, a litany of, of fraud charges. He is not to be believed. And yet there are six different points here that I, I, I want to quickly go through. Number one, um, the timing of this is so suspicious because, you know, Trump was just found liable for the E. Jean Carroll. And whenever the, the Republicans do a tit for tat, if Trump yep. is found liable for something, you know, if Trump is indicted, it's Hunter, Hunter, Hunter. And, you know, the Biden crime family. And they just have to turn it around on on this. And this is it sounds exactly like that. Number two, you know. I don't know if Obama is bisexual or or gay. I and 
I don't think it's the get that Republicans think it is. I don't think anyone would care. I think on the one hand, gays would be like, yeah, we want him on our side. We want him on our team. But I don't think, you know, he's been out of office for seven years. It's not like he has that there's any skin in the game. What is the purpose of this? Why And why would they think that Democrats would be like, oh, a gay person? You know, yeah, yeah. like it just doesn't make any sense at all. Now, the other point is that he's Barack Obama. And he, if he's gay, he's going to be pulling a lot better than this <laughs> toothless old hobo. He was a, he's a hot man. He's still a hot guy. And he could have anyone he wants. He's not going to go with this freakazoid. Now, so that's number three. What's number four? Um, uh, 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 let me see. Because okay. I have a question for you. Isn't there a book that came out relatively recently about Obama where it extracts it, a, a letter that Obama wrote to his ex-girlfriend saying that he had conceptually homosexual yeah. desires, but, but, but he would then, never... Yeah, but he would never act on them. And then he also says that he theoretically identifies with androgyny and things like that. Mm -hmm. But in, in the once you take it down to the real world that he realizes that he's a man, it's, it was this whole, you know, it was a grad student, you know, over theorizing, you know, gender and sexuality as you do. And it means absolutely nothing. So I'm not going to take it means that. He's intelligent and thoughtful. So exactly. Going back to going back to the, the meth head that was, was on the uh, Tucker uh, Carlson show. I just want to, is this, if you take nothing away from the show, do you know the difference between a cocaine addict and a meth head? A cocaine addict will steal your drugs. A meth head will steal your drugs and then help you look for them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Gay Bomber at number three. Don't believe um, them. Don't believe them is the moral. <laughs> right. Gay Bomber. Number two. Number two. I love that we've gone into a whole different sort of vibe here. So it feels appropriate to talk about the Mile High Shit Show. Oh! <laughs> you sent a picture and I'm still not over it. Go ahead. Right this week, um, a plane took off from Atlanta en route for Barcelona. And after about four hours into the flight, um, there was a message that they had to turn back due to... Uh, an explosive outbreak of diarrhea and no, um, no, it, was, it was one person who had the diarrhea one, well, i like, know that i don't i don't think you had to alert anyone that this is because i am sure every on single plane. person on the plane knew about it because you will see it and it's all up and down the aisle it's just yes. a brown trail the, the 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 audio says you can find it on the on x or on twitter all the way through the plane it was, and like the actual video where you can see like paper towels on the, the like, trail. I'm it's the only stench. person who sees that and thinks, but for the grace of God, go I, with the person that had the diarrhea down the, like, like sometimes well, you just okay. gotta go. Look, you you three Ozempic heads all watch <laughs> out because that is that is the, the future that you all are going but to But I do, I, look, I'm not shaming the guy at all. I, or, no. or whoever it was, I don't even know if it was a, a guy. But it just seems such an extraordinary amount that to be able to sort of get it all the length of the play. I do believe that people in first class said it wasn't so bad in first class. So, but it never still, is. It never is. It's, it's an A350. I mean, that's quite... But you're running down to go to the bathroom and you're not making it in time. <laughs> Haven't you ever had like the, the 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 turbulence like go on at the wrong time? And you're like, once I went and the, and the they said you, you at your own risk. And I'm like, yeah, lady, at my own risk. Let me go. Let me go. This is before I was up. But thank you, James. <laughs> um, <laughs> well. The you know, but I, I do just have to say that it would not be the wow report without poop and cannibalism. <laughs> that this is very on brand for us to be discussing. Well, coming up, I've just been watching Yellow Jackets and it is amazing. So we Speaking will. Cannibalism. Oh. Well, just to, to finish the story, the plane returned to Atlanta. Apparently, the all hats off to the crew who were apparently amazing and the ground crew ripped out the entire carpet on the plane, replaced the whole thing. And I think eight hours later, the plane took off. That is one flight you would want to be canceled, personally speaking. I was going to say, I don't think I would want to be on the next flight after that because I'm sure there was some lingering doo-doo smell. No, they got the, all the passengers got back on and said that not only was there no smell, but it smelled very nice. 
And that was a vast improvement on the attempt initially mm. to use a vanilla sort of perfume to cover up the whole thing. I oh, love the God, smell I of new just, I'm just yeah, gagging. Vanilla <laughs> covered shit. Vanilla oh. smelling. Ugh. There you go. All right. I have to clean uh, myself. All this poo talk has gotten me a little. <laughs> All right. One more break. And when we come back, the number one thing this week that made us go wow here on the Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. And welcome back to the Wow Report. We've been counting down the top 10 things of the week that made us go wow. Um, well, there's only one place to go now, and that's number one. <laughs> oh, see, I sneezed just like that poor person had to go diarrhea. I couldn't stop myself. Oh, no. Number one. Number one, because James is fighting us on this. It was James's number one. And there are two guys on the internet who are playing a little sketch called The Mean Gaze, which is every other hookup I've ever had in my life. And with the idea, I don't know who they are, but their expression is fantastic. And it's from the point of view of someone who hooks up on Grinder or something or meets up with a couple. And they're all like, oh, oh. You know, when did you take your picture? That when, when did you take that picture? Oh, that recently. Oh, you look dehydrated. <laughs> Meaning that you look old and awful. And they end up kicking him out. I don't. I don't. I was not my number. I was not prepared. But we have to show. Had to go on. Very good. Well, I will <laughs> ask. I will ask. This has never happened to me, but I have been on the other end where you feel bad for the. I mean, someone has been on the other end where they feel bad for the person, and you just hook up with them anyway. Oh uh, no! See, I have been on the the receiving end of of mean girls like that when I show up and they're like, "Oh," <laughs> and you just it just it's just so it uh, just makes you feel. Awesome. Just but say- then there's a follow up um uh, uh Twitter uh, mean girls Twitter where they're reading letters of people. I don't know if, if you guys seen this one who took it they're... seriously and hate them. Yeah, yeah, but but they but um they're reading letters from people as the mean girls and they're answering as mean girls again. <laughs> and it's just it's so they are so funny. I think Andrew Goldberg is his name, one of them, the bald one. It's it's hilarious. I don't it caught my attention. It we got on my feed. And I have to say, as much as I have been rejected, the thing about gay men, and except for Blake, who's never been rejected, the thing huh. about gay men is that we are the hunted and the hunters. So we know how quick a man's mind can be like, Ugh, not going to touch that. And we've also can receive, you know, like we do it and we receive it. And it's like, it's harsh, man. It's harsh to try to talk yourself into one of those situations. Like, hey, hi. And I have been in situations. I used to, when I had, okay, too much information, cut me off. But when I used to have more anonymous sex back in the 80s, 90s, I, I sometimes would fall through just out of politeness. It seemed like etiquette to me. All right. Well, thanks for tuning into the Wow Report on Radio Andy, Sirius XM, previous episodes on our YouTube channel, Wow Presents, and um, same time, same place next week. Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go wow. Wow. Maybe Blake take out the thing with the dick in my hand. Maybe. <laughs>